Hey guys, I am super stoked to announce that Omaze is giving away a 2020 C8 Stingray Z51, taxes and shipping paid, plus 20K in the trunk. All you gotta do is go to omaze.com slash the smoking tire to enter. The C8 Stingray is one of my favorite cars of the year. It's one of the best riding cars I've ever driven. The dual clutch gearbox is amazing from an American company, and it is way fast, especially for its price point. But it's totally sold out. So the only way you can get one now is by going to omaze.com slash the smoking tire. Every donation benefits a great cause, the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center check for details on the site. So just go to omaze.com slash the smoking tire and check it out for yourself. I will see you out on the road. Hey everyone, good morning and welcome to uh, the other side of the canyons. I've been in one side of the forest for like a month now. We're over on, we're over here now to talk like dice. The AMG GTC Mercedes. Man, this thing is cool and it is gorgeous back in uh 2016 i drove the amg gts for drive on nbc sports i never got a chance to do it uh for the smoking tire uh this is the first of the amg gt range i've ever done for the smoking tire so shout out to mercedes for uh for getting me on this bandwagon uh the way the nomenclature works in the amg gt range is you have the base gt and if we're gonna make a Porsche analogy, that would be your Carrera. You then have the GTS, same as the Carrera S. You then have the GTC, which is what we're in now, lines up with the 911 GTS. You then have the AMG GTR, that's sort of somewhere between the GT3 and the Turbo, and then you have the GTR Pro, and that's somewhere between the GT3 RS and the GT2 RS. The GTC, as many will tell you, including Johnny Lieberman in our podcast over and over, is sort of the sweet spot in the middle. It weighs 3,741 pounds. It has a 550 horsepower, 502 pound-feet of torque, hot V, V8, in which the entire engine is mounted behind the front wheels. It is a front mid-engine design, and you're really sitting on the rear axle. This is one of just a very few cars left you can buy with this design. The Ferrari 812 Superfast comes to mind, as well as a couple of the Morgans, but that's really it. Um, but because of the placement of that engine, you have a 47.53 weight distribution, which is fantastic. Uh, comparisons, uh, the 911 GT3 is 39.61, the C7 Corvette is 50-50, and the C8 Corvette is 40-60. This actually has the same exact weight distribution as the Ferrari 812 Superfast, and in order to do that, you gotta move that engine way back. With the 812, it's a V12, so it's there's no room. The hot V V8 in this is actually quite small and compact, so that means that you actually have a ton of room in this cabin. This is a great car for taller drivers. There's lots of leg room. Um, you have a seven-speed dual-clutch transaxle connected by a carbon fiber torque tube, an electronic limited slip differential, a but five different gearbox modes, five, three different suspension modes, three different, four different throttle modes, and it's a lot of options like in our other AMGs. Fortunately, you just click that individual knob, you set it once, and it's there uh, forever. The bodywork is three inches wider than the regular AMG GTS, and it's even wider. This thing is 79 inches wide. It's like four inches wider than a 992. That's crazy. And this one has optional 15.4 uh, inch carbon ceramic brakes. The steel wheel uh, brakes, the regular brakes are the same size. It's just a different material. Let's drive and talk. Now, that's a pretty big stagger, actually. 
the stagger has to do with the weight distribution. If there was more weight up front, further in the front, you'd need a wider front tire because that weight is moved further back. A 265 is sufficient, and that's sort of under our threshold for tram lining. This road is a particularly uh, tram lining road if you've got too much front tire. pounds of boost. Look at this, we've got rear steer, and so the turning radius is quite good. Want to do a launch? Let's do a launch. We're in individual mode. I don't need to be in Sport Plus for this. It's very easy. Left foot brake, right foot gas, and go. Big burnout. for traction there on the launch. The launch control itself, very easy to use, no problem, but the zero to 10 was just like terrible there. So don't judge this car on the zero to 60 time because that's really traction limited, except if you're on like a VHT surface or something. Whereas from this speed, <laughs> yes. It's not a drag car, folks. It's a 24 hours of Le Mans car. Sitting back here, like way far back from that front wheel, it's such a unique thing. And I don't, it's not that I didn't appreciate it when more cars were like that, but now that so many sports cars are either, you know, true front engine car, four seat car, or going mid engine, this sort of long nose sitting on the rear axle design, it can be appreciated as sort of a form of almost nostalgia. Like, remember how in the 
70s, driving a Porsche was a totally different thing. It was a, it was wrong, right? The engine was in the wrong place. And, and Porsche, by just committing to that formula, refining it and improving it, has taken us to where we are today. Same thing with this sitting on the rear axle formula. It doesn't really seem like in 2020 that should be the ideal way forward. And yet, from 2016 to here, Mercedes has refined this to something that is quite lovely and unique and special. And instead of me going, you know, I really like when the engine's behind me now, I can be like, wow, this provides a totally unique uh, driving experience. Uh, it's not totally unique because the Ferrari 812 is similar, but where you have this ultra luxurious view of this long hood. Think OG, think Great Gatsby, think of the most elegant cars, right? An elegant car has a long nose and has the, the cockpit over the back. Think how a Rolls Phantom is raked back or a Duesenberg, right? Big long nose. And then think about the Bentley Bentayga and how it's got that ugly stubby nose because that axle to dash ratio had to be the same. This being a dedicated platform, they have made that axle to dash ratio just brilliant in terms of seeing an elegant shape and making it work and then having room behind the axle for the engine so that it actually handles properly. It's really, really cool. The whole car is an aluminum space frame. The, oh, there we go. That was a good negative G where my butt came out of the seat a little bit, but the tires stayed on the tarmac. Uh, the whole, oh, there we go. Same thing happened again. There's going to be another one in this bend. I think it's under 600 pounds is the entire aluminum space frame in this car. Very, very cool. The whole car weighs 3,700 and change, which is not super light, but um, it's a real dense car. Lots of technology, the rear steer, a lot of this stuff, it's, uh, it's heavy, it's dense. You could probably make it lighter with more carbon fiber and more advanced composites, but it might drive the cost really out of control. Now we're going to go down to the section of the canyon that gets more tight. The road is smoother, but the, the, uh, the corners are tighter, and so we're going to be in the lower gears and seeing how the agility works. It's a very wide car. You know, you're not really able to run a line within the lane. You pretty much have one line to work with in the lane here. Here's a yump into tight braking. Okay, let's see how we... How do we do in the tight corners here? Steering is very sharp. Not a ton of feedback for the steering. A little bit artificial, but very sharp. shock setting, manual gearbox. This is as stiff as it gets. Now this road is very smooth, so that's okay, but I tried it on a regular road, and it was it was not really very pleasant. But on this road, which is smooth, I can really feel every single crack in the tarmac, which is not entirely desirable to me. Let's take it back to regular sport and manual that's where right on this road the sport shock is good you can really tailor this thing to how you want to drive I mean that you can adjust the traction control you can adjust the shocks the gearbox um, all kind of different stuff but you really only have to adjust it once and then set that individual mode 
and do one click. One of the things I hated about the 2016 car, one of the very few things I hated, was that every time I got in the car, I had to press like six buttons to get it in the right mode. Now, right here, one click forward, individual, and that certainly saves me a lot of time and a lot of uh, headache. Ceramic brakes are excellent. I don't really think they are necessary for the average driver. They add some cost, but they're working. Really like the balance of the car. I mean, it really feels very, very neutral. Forgiving, it's not hard to drive. Hannah, my wife, likes driving it. Not like this, but she likes driving it around the city. Good brake feel. Really nice grip, plenty of grip. It's fast. And the brakes keep doing it over and over. Tightens. That's my case in the back, sorry. Gearbox has given me every shift I've asked for in the last 12 minutes. Not a neg in there. GTR also get their own gear ratios compared to the GT and GTS, giving them uh, roughly the same ratios as a, a GT3 RS with PDK. So that's good to know. That's a pretty comparable. Stays on the red line, not upshifting if I don't want it. The sounds are fantastic. Sorry about my case in the trunk there, folks. There's not a lot of things to secure it down. At the moment. Yeah, this thing rules. This thing rules! Guys, listen, front engine car is not totally dead. I love a mid-engine car, I love a rear-engine car, but what I really love is a unique motoring experience. And in the situations where the motoring experience can be unique, but you don't have to make any gnarly sacrifices in order to get that experience, that's the best. This car offers a, I don't want to call it totally unique, because again, the Ferrari 812 exists for twice the price, but for 150,000 base, 179,000 is tested. Uh, this one's got some cosmetic options. It's got about 8,000 of paint, leather, and chrome. And then it's got um, another 9,000 of carbon brakes, uh, 1,200 for the wheels, active cruise control, 2,200, um, carbon fiber crossbar, 1,600, and then 4,500 for the Burmeister. So we're at 180 grand here for this. Great spec. Really, really great alternative to a 911 if you're not into the current 911s or if you really want um, a cool car that stands out, it looks great, it's got beautiful curb appeal, everybody loves it. And it's also, it's a Mercedes. You know, it's it, it, it when you need it to be a normal car, it's a great normal car. You've got your glass roof, it's got a decent sized trunk, um, it's got pretty good clearance. So I'm really about this thing. The only thing um, I am not into is this command system. The GLC 63 that I drove a couple weeks ago had this touchpad and then it had a touch screen. This has the touchpad but no touch screen. You have to do everything through this touchpad and this touchpad is terrible. Like this car is so good that it bums me out so much how bad the touchpad is because it might legitimately keep me out of buying a car like this. Um, I know there it's due for a total refresh soon. I'm sure they're going to handle it then. That the system in the other car is fine, but to scroll through stations and stuff one swipe at a time on this touchpad is so frustrating. I cannot tell you the number of bad songs I left on the radio because it was just too frustrating to bother changing the channel. It's a, com it's a single complaint um, in an otherwise, I hesitate to use the word perfect, but man, it's, it's 
just about as close as this kind of car will ever get. Um, I'm driving the GTR convertible in August, so maybe that'll be better. Maybe this is the sweet spot. We'll see. Um, but that's it. This car is a 10 out of 10, except for the radio, which really kind of holds it back on the usability scale. But thank you to uh, Mercedes AMG for letting me have this thing uh, for a week. It's, it was a great week with the car. Thank you to you for watching. We'll see you later. And remember, always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app.